Hi, I'm Dave Shenton, um, avid lepidopterist uh, based in Kent. Um, I'm county moth recorder, uh, but also avid interest in recording butterflies as well. So the state of butterflies in the UK in 2024 has been in the news a lot. It's not been good news, it's safe to say. Um, Insectageddon are phrases that have been used, you know, where have all the butterflies gone? Um, it's not been a great year. Um, what are the reasons behind that? The weather, it's the weather conditions that we've had through the spring, wet, cold, they've not been conducive to butterfly activity at all. You may be thinking sort of as a woodland owner, what can I do to encourage butterflies? Uh, because they, you know, they need it, they do need help. Um, there's actually a lot that can be done. Um, a lot of it is quite simple, straightforward. A lot of common sense really can be applied. Um, to summarise it, before we perhaps get into the detail, you could describe it as a need for light and shade. Uh, you need diversity of habitat, diversity of structure. So you need diversity in the canopy, you need glades, you need rides, you need those edges, you need good buffering of the woodland. So there's some key things that help your woodland to be good for butterflies, but there's a lot of detail in there and the number of species that you may have and what you have in there can dictate the sort of the ideal management that you would do. But it is about trying to strike that balance, having those areas where you've got strong canopy and shade, where you've got bright open glides and raids, those warmer sheltered spots as well. When we consider other species of butterfly we find in woodland, um, there's a group called the fritillaries and a significant number of that family rely on woodland to be able to complete their life cycle. Um, one really a flashy one, a really flashy sort of master of the air is the silver wash fritillary. Uh, it's noticeable for its really fast flight, but more than that, so when it's mating, the females in a lovely sunny glade, they will fly really fast in a straight line. Then the male really gets to show off his aerial prowess. He will do cartwheels around her. He will do sort of aerobatics to try and impress her. And he'll shower her with scales to really impress that he's the one that she should mate with and have her offspring with. Really fun to see. It leads us to think about the type of woodland management that will allow for the conditions that many of these butterflies will need to be able to thrive um, and it's a year-round consideration so woodland butterflies they'll have a range of techniques some of them will overwinter as eggs some will overwinter as larvae some as pupae some even will hibernate as adults so from that it's clear to see that you'll need diversity in the habitats in your own woodland so that you can allow for those differences with different species that you may have. Um, the sort of management you need is again back to you need that variety and you need rotation if you can. Cut different areas at different times and move that around. Uh, the Heath Fertillery uh, has a colloquial name it's called the Woodman's Follower because Traditionally, when there would be management coppicing, for example, of the woodlands and then a flush of the larval food plant, the patches where you'd find the heath fertility would move around following the woodman in his yearly cycles. You're interested in the butterflies you may have um, in your woodland. How are you going to go about identifying some of them? Well, there are those fairly common and widespread species that are going to be well known to, to a lot of people. So you've got things like the peacock quite a large butterfly, strong flyer, and it's got those classic peacock eyes when it opens its wings. So fair, it's completely unmistakable. Um, you've got Red Admiral, another fairly large, strong flying, common butterfly. Again, very dark, but with those flashes of bright red and of white. So again, another unmistakable common butterfly that you'll see. If you want to ID them, you want to find them. So um, several ways to do this. Um, Find yourself a nice sunny spot, so a glade or a ride, often where you may have bramble in flower, for example, which is a great nectaring source for quite a number of these species. You can just stand, sit and watch, and, and that's often the best way in woodland. Let the wildlife come to you. In looking for butterflies, you're, you know, every butterfly you see, as well as being really nice to see and noteworthy, it's, it's a piece of data. Um, knowing that that butterfly was there at a certain time is going to be really helpful. Uh, butterflies probably present a unique data set in the fact that they've been studied so well for so long 
uh, compared to many other species, groups of uh, groups of species, that that data set is so valuable, but it needs adding to. So it, whether it is just a peacock or whether it's something more rare, every record is valuable. And do try and look into things like iRecord, for example. You can find that online. It's a, re it's a really simple app. And then people will know that those butterflies are there. And it really helps people then plan for how we might help the butterflies going forward.